from? I am from London. London. Okay, my fellow Londoner. Mm. What part of London are you from? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I grew up in like Kilburn area, so like northwest London, but now I live in North London, like near Tottenham. Nice. I'm from Hackney, mm-hmm. not far away. Woo, Hackney. Yeah, the best place, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have you been there Isn't a lot? It? Is or? it really? Oh, uh, not really. I've not spent that much time together. My sister's just moved to Hackney Wick, nice. so I'll probably end up spending more time there. But... Yeah, it's kind of like you yeah. just stay in your area, Barra, no? And you don't really... Yeah, I guess so, where your friends yeah, are. Yeah, true. Where did you go to school? Um, I went to school in Angel, because oh. my parents didn't want to send me to a rubbish school in North West London, so they sent me to a rubbish oh. school in North London. <laughs> Are there any good schools in London? Because I think everyone has a rubbish uh, school unless you went to like a very... Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I think, to be fair, my school is really good uh-huh. now. It became like uh, Michelle Obama was like their spoke... Not spoke... What's the word? Like she was their... Um, oh, what's that word? Like ambassador. Okay. She was the ambassador for the school. So then it all went uphill and now it's just like an amazing school. But when so I was there, it was... Like, uh, how old are you? 30. Okay, so it was like a 2000s thing, like late 90s, like yeah. rough, trying to get it together. Yeah. Because, yeah, my school was a yeah. bit on the dodgy side as well, actually. But <laughs> look at exactly, us now. I was just thinking the same. <laughs> look. Yeah. Okay, and... Um, look what, how it turned <laughs> out. What's your family's background? Where are they from? Um, so my mum's from Chile in South America, and my dad is Scottish. But I've also got a little slab of Lebanese in there from my Chilean side. So I'm just an all-rounder, nice. everything and anything. Nice, a nice mix. So I'm guessing mm-hmm. you speak Spanish? Oh, yes, I yes, do. Yes, you do. Would you like to practice a bit with me later? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Well, was it, well, are you bilingual? Do you consider yourself bilingual or...? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's more just because I speak... Spanish that my mum taught me so I've never like I only know like home Spanish so I've never so when I speak to other people I never know if I'm using like the correct terms or if that's just like Chilean stuff well it probably is I mean I each know. country yeah, has their own maybe. slang and the way they speak so yeah exactly so I always get a bit embarrassed do they understand for, like, you do they people. get you more or less yeah so, it's more just my, exactly, my own maybe. confidence in it yeah I think yeah. As long as you can understand the basics. Now, all the slang and stuff, yeah, maybe exactly. that's a bit too, too chilly, but yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sure it's good. Let's practice a bit later. I want to practice. I want to <laughs> see if my Spanish is good. I've been I've been here in Spain for a while, so let's see if it's up to scratch. We'll put you to exactly. the test, huh? Because technically, mine should be worse than yours. Technically. <laughs> technically. <laughs> okay. Um, so tell me, was creativity always something that was encouraged in your house? Yeah, massively. Um, both my parents are musicians, so they used to take me and my sister to every gig that they possibly could. We were always like the little, like no one ever takes kids to gigs, but we were just there, just sat there like, this is fun. <laughs> so it was always, yeah, we'd go to like jazz gigs or like, so my dad's a classical guitarist, we'd go to like classical gigs, which I always found really boring. Okay. <laughs> and now? <laughs> um, it's just not for me. Okay. It's not my style. Okay. Well, it's good. Yeah. You got to see. I, I can appreciate that. it. You yeah. Got to see a wide range of. I'm more of a. Oh, I can like dance to this. This sounds fun and okay. funky. So this more leading to the jazz than the jazz. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, my parents always encouraged me and let me just do my thing. Mm-hmm. It was pretty so good. there was never any fear of uh, going into the art world or being an artist. It was always a possibility. For I mean, you. yeah. Well, I never wanted to be a musician because there's no money mm, in it so, wow. so i ended up so i ended up doing okay. art which is the money as well <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i mean the arts in general they're not known for being the most lucrative of careers uh, but no. if you have a dream and a new song exactly yeah. and now i found i found my pathway and it's going all good for nice. me so i think as long as you follow something that you love and then just keep doing it eventually it will happen yeah, for you exactly put all your effort into one thing and it should turn mm-hmm. out right so maybe it would have been okay if you were a musician 
Maybe. Oh, it's yeah. just, oh, it wasn't no. for me. Did you ever play any instrument? I played the saxophone. Yeah, I played the saxophone. Okay, nice. And then it got, I was really good at, like, the, the listening stuff mm-hmm. and the, the jazzy things. But when it got to, like, the theory and and sight reading like it was just too much so i got to grade five and then when you get to grade five you have to do all this theory stuff and i was like no, yeah. i'm done yeah. all <laughs> theory done. stuff so the academic kind of learning science. yeah all the and the scales and like why is this yeah. and what's a pentatonic scale and all that me. stuff and it was okay well mm-hmm. it looks like you're on the right side of things then it looks like you chose well yeah, yeah. uh still creative yeah. it's all good so Tell me, what's the most difficult part for you about creating? So is it the deciding what you're going to do, choosing a colour palette? What do you find the trickiest to be the trickiest part when you're when you're creating something? I think like right now, because I'm doing a lot of mural painting, I like clients want to see the designs beforehand. And so you like the way I do it is I have my iPad and I like draw out designs and then I send them to them and then they let me know which ones they like but that is the biggest thing for me because it gets like a mental block mm. because I'm now doing something for someone else instead of for myself yeah. and then I like I like wind myself up in my head like I've had this job that I've been putting off for so uh-huh. long why <laughs> and I need to design oh because you know, it's like, oh, yeah, that will eventually happen. Mm-hmm. And so it's been in my head for so long that now I've built it up to be this massive mm-hmm. thing, even though it's literally just painting someone's mm-hmm. wall, which I do every every yeah. day. <laughs> so is it like the fear of, or maybe you're not comfortable with them saying they don't like a design? I don't know. Or... I think it's just I've left it mm-hmm. so long that I've just made it up to mm-hmm. be this really hard thing like I've got to send her some designs like all I need to do is do some yeah. drawing but I'm just worried that it'll be like the wrong thing that she didn't want or whatever and get yeah I just get left it too it, long I know yeah. this is what I meant to be doing no today sabotage, please. yeah I'll try. I'll try I mean you've been doing it for how long now painting murals uh like on and off for two three years but like fully maybe like since the pandemic mm-hmm. <laughs> a little bit before okay. then so you've had but then yeah the gap yeah. the gap between the pandemic kind of screwed it mm. up but then i was able to work on those collage stuff like develop my own practice mm. so it all worked out okay yeah. so basically you're kind of still newish to the mural world so maybe this is why you're yeah, still I, mm. working with other people in, in that sense i mean that you're still new to having designs uh done for someone else so maybe yeah the, and clients yeah. Yeah, commissions. But it's good mm-hmm. because it, it gives you. Well, you tell me. Why do you enjoy doing commissions? Why don't you just um, stick with your own art and sell it, and stick with what you want to do as opposed to doing designs for other people? Well, I think it's because I get to paint murals, which is the best bit about it. So, all I have, like in general, it's fine. Like I will send a client like five different designs, and they generally just pick one, or they'll be like, "Oh, can you just add in something there, or do this?" So it's in general, it's pr- like very easy for me. But it's just when I wind myself up in my yeah. head about it that that's when it gets like, "Oh, yeah." And, I, and I'm painting her house on Friday, oh, so I need to get it done today. Oh, like the, the whole <laughs> house, right or just now? The yeah. No, it's just okay. a wall and it's like not even that big, okay. but I just need to do okay. it and because okay. it's been on my to-do list for so long. Yeah. Once, <laughs> you, once like, you've done it, you'll see that, okay, that wasn't so hard. Yeah, I'll be like, yeah. I'm free and it only took me 10 uh, minutes. And then the next job will come along <laughs> and you'll be like, yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it should get better with time, right? Yeah. I just need to do stuff straight away and then I, I can't like anxiety myself about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you said before that you keep creativity flowing by doing things you love and are proud of. It's just part of your Mm -hmm. Q&A. Talk about that. How did you come to that realisation? I think because I was always trying to do things that I thought I was meant to do. And then... But doing those didn't, didn't make me happy, like... I was working in like film and TV and yeah, it was fun, but I wasn't developing my own thing or like having time to create because it's such long hours. And then I finally started doing my own things and slowly, slowly I got to see what I really loved doing. And then 
by doing that, I was showing everyone else, like on Instagram, I was just showing what I would love to do. And then people love seeing people love what exactly. they do. And then it just like snowballs. Exactly. So I think if you just keep doing what you do and if you're proud of showing your work, you're like, oh, this is what I do. I do like colorful murals and people are like, oh, that's great. Whereas I used to run, I had my own um, like screen printed clothing business. And I was always really embarrassed to tell people. And I think that kind of proved that it wasn't for oh. me. But I just, I kind of kept at it thinking that it would be okay. Like, oh, just keep going, I'll keep going. But it was, it wasn't my passion. Mm-hmm. So I think I was always just too embarrassed to talk about it. Whereas now I'm quite happy mm-hmm. to explain what I do and what I'm doing and like show people. And were the t-shirts so think, with your yeah. designs or were they just... Um... Yeah, so I designed them, I'd like hand paint stuff. Um, but it wasn't as like because you're kind of limited to what you can do on a t-shirt it wasn't enough for me I wanted it to be like super crazy colorful and it never was so I think that was always what made me a bit embarrassed mm. like it didn't really reflect my personality as oh, much as it could have. because I've seen on your website mm. that you you have a lot of stuff with your designs on it not just that like, you do murals and yeah so now yeah so now I've developed it with my own style but doing things that I love more like combining more colors and things together and so it is still still me but in my old clothing brand I still wasn't sure what I was doing so it wasn't enough of me and that's why okay. I think I was just a you bit like, doing it too, like I've got a business <laughs> but ooh, yeah I don't want to tell everyone well, about you it learned from that that was that yeah was exactly a, an important learning experience you saw that okay mm-hmm. this is kind of the direction i want to go in but i'm not doing it to the full extent so i'm gonna pivot mm-hmm. and then now you're basically doing the same thing but on a larger scale and with designs that yeah. you like right great <laughs> okay so you are your own boss basically <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> so how do you find that <laughs> balance of creating and then taking care of the business side and looking for clients or, you know, promoting yourself on things like Instagram. Mm -hmm. How does that balance work out for you? Uh, I guess it's quite hard to separate your your life from your business because they're so connected. So I do find that I end up working more than I probably should or even if you're not working, you're constantly like thinking about stuff. Like I'll be like, playing playstation whatever and in the back of my head i know i've got like seven things to design and tomorrow i've got to get all my paints ready like you can never switch off but in terms of getting clients and promoting i basically just use instagram like instagram is amazing for me because i just use it as like an online online portfolio so i just post what i'm doing this is how i get to my process these are my collages that inspire my things so it's just like putting out there what i do and and that's just how I get people to like follow and then eventually they're like, I want to be wrong too. And then people see that you're busy and then they want a piece of the action. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, Instagram has been amazing has, for me. It has in general for like artists mm. for the last I don't know how many years that everyone's able to kind of start their own thing, promote themselves and basically for free on Instagram, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's so good. And, and you can f- choose to follow people yeah. and you get inspired exactly. by other people kind of in the art community seeing what other people are doing and yeah stuff. and everyone's so like i was saying this to someone else like i've not had any negative experiences on instagram really mm-hmm. which is weird because you th- you hear about everyone just having a terrible time on social media like you get trolled and whatever but i think i've ended up building such a nice community mm-hmm. of people like everyone just supports weird if a you troll they... came onto an artist page and said like i know but people really? do because i've never i've never I'm experienced pretty... it i've never seen it but i'm i'm sure people do do it but know. yeah maybe it's like the really, i think really, it's like such big, a small amount huge... i think when when you hit like 30 thousand or whatever yeah. people can start feeling like they can say yeah. things because you you're getting yeah. big but right now i've got like four and a half mm-hmm. thousand followers and everyone's just so yeah. nice i hope it stays that way yeah, I know. I know, yeah. I'll start getting trolled now. Can you imagine? What would they say? <laughs> what can you say? I mean... I hate your colours. You're too happy. Oh, You're too happy, exactly, <laughs> basically. Yeah. You're living your life and doing what you want to do. I hate your guts, yeah. Yeah, screw you. Yeah. God, sad people. I mean, you never know. People yeah, sad out there. They do. they do do stupid stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> so, 
uh, would you say at the moment that murals are your favorite way of expressing creativity? Uh, do you think it will change? Do you think there's something in the future you'd like to try? I'd say, yeah, they're my favorite bit to do because you'll do it and then you'll step back and be like, oh, this looks amazing. Yeah. And you just got like a giant wall with your art on it. Like it's different to do something on like an A4 piece of paper and then translate that onto a three meter wall. And it just makes it just like, yeah, I'm so excited. And then everyone can appreciate it as well because it's like in your face. It's not, it's not on a screen. It's not on a piece of paper. Like you can appreciate fully. Yeah. It's like, Look at all these colours and they make me so happy. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. But I reckon, I don't know, like, I move on from stuff quite quickly. Like, I'd be like, oh, I've done that yeah. now. So who knows, maybe, who <laughs> maybe knows? in a few months I'm like, I am, I am bored of mural <laughs> painting. I, I don't know, maybe I'll move on to something else. But, it's, it's, but for it's now, true. it's still it's, good. Especially the way your designs are set. It's really satisfying, actually, to see these kind of big, bold blocks of colour, like, on a big wall. It's true. It's, I mean... I'm mm -hmm. sure as lovely on paper, but just seeing it there, I can I can imagine it's it's quite satisfying. Yeah, it just makes such a massive difference. And maybe I don't think you'll just stop doing murals. You just maybe cut down and maybe do something else. But mm, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll do like a couple yeah. here and there. Who knows? Like maybe this is what my sister said. She was like, "So when are you going to move on to your next oh, thing?" Oh, <laughs> excuse me. <pressure. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, because she knows what I'm like. Yeah. Also, it maybe depends on maybe one day someone asks you to do something that you hadn't thought of and you say, oh. Yeah, that exactly. Like, people always tell me I should do like textile, like fabric prints or like stationery. So, who knows? Like, if anyone approached me, would be like, yeah, sure. And then maybe that will move on to something yeah. else. Like, That's the one thing I love about the art world knows. is that the possibilities are limitless. There are so many things you can yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so yeah. Keep yourself open to the possibilities. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, and um, let's see. You already said about your murals. Why you? Yes, you did. I think you answered the question without me having to ask you. <gasps> God, I'm such a good interviewee. You skipped a question. <laughs> okay, so let me see. We talked about you being a full-time artist. We talked about your balance between business and art. Um, did you say exactly why you decided to do murals? No. Okay, that's one of my questions. I didn't answer the question uh, fully. Uh, <gasps> so, like, what, what was the moment when you said, okay, I'm going to jump from just doing art on paper or whatever surface you were doing on to I'm going to do murals? Did, it, did a customer come first uh, or did the idea come first? Oh, I think it was my godparents asked me they were like hey we've got this wall outside it looks horrific cool. like do you want to come and paint it and i said yeah sure i've never done it but wow. <laughs> i'll give it a go and so they just bought the paints for me i painted it up and that was my first ever one and it was quite a big mm -hmm. one to be fair. it was like a ma like the extension of a mm -hmm. house so it was like all three wow. walls so yeah, it was quite big. And then from there I was like, this, this, is, nice. this, is, this is fun. <laughs> and then I was part of a, I had a studio in a place in Wilsdon Green, like an old police station. Mm -hmm. And so I was mates with the guys who ran it and they just moved in and it was all just a bit, bit naff. Like everything was a bit ugly and old. And I said, oh, do you mind if I like paint these? Like, we'll, we'll go to a recycling place, get some free paints and I'll just do whatever. And they're like, yeah, sure. And so then I started doing that and then I don't know, and then slowly, slowly, but it just you basically kind happening. of fell into it. From, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, that's okay, what I mean. Cool. So the next thing, I'll just fall into the next thing, and then I'll be like, oh, this but is look, fun. As we were just saying just now, like you don't know what the next thing is going to be. I'm sure you were not yeah, thinking exactly. about murals, and then they asked <laughs> you to do that for them. And you're like, oh, okay, this is cool. That's great. I think all it takes is one person to believe in you or give you that that uh, like thing to do, and like let you have the time to do it and not feel pressured into messing I it agree. up. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. So the quick fire round, do you remember? I've changed the questions. Chicken or beef? I have chicken or beef. <laughs> <laughs> Neither. No, chicken. 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 Why did I say chicken, yeah. chicken? It's true. 
if I have to choose. <laughs> uh, okay. Ready? Quick yes. fire questions. Scotland or Chile? Chile. Scotland. Scotland. Chile. Is your dad yeah, or Scotland. your mother? Oh, don't tell them. They're not gonna. They're not. They're not gonna get this. They'll see this. Up. <laughs> the last series you binge watched. Sweet Tooth on Netflix. Ah. It's about this, uh, it, like, to do with kind of like the pandemic, yeah. but it's flipped. And so these hybrid uh, children start, like, happening. They don't know if the hybrid kids happened or the virus happened, Ooh, but it's basically like COVID. Good. Yeah, and so there's these, like, half animal, half human kids, and then it all, the world goes to crap, and they're all trying to get rid of these hybrid kids. Oh, but they're so it's, evil like, the story hybrid of this kids. one child. No, they they're just normal Aww. kids, but the people don't like them because they're hybrid okay. kids, and they think they started the virus. Uh, yeah, but it's really okay. good. It's a really okay. good program. I'll check that out. Yeah. Okay. Your yeah. first job. Uh, I worked in a jewellery shop in Covent Garden. Ooh. I hated oh. it. Yeah, Ugh. because. Yeah. Because it was this like. Oh, it was all yoga inspired jewelry oh, okay. and like everything Shut had a us. meaning. And, yeah, and it was American, so it's very like <laughs> all the gemstones have a meaning. And you had to approach every customer that came in, and it was the shop was always so empty, yeah. so you always made the customer feel really yeah. awkward. Like, yeah, yeah. Can I explain what the, all these things mean? Your, your manager yeah, or boss was watching you there, like, get, get, yeah, get. and you were like, hi, sorry to disturb yeah. you. <laughs> service industry I don't miss mm -hmm. okay your favourite nope. chocolate <gasps> uh, lint the lint oh, balls oh the dark ones or the red ones mm. the red okay. ones what? or the ones with like hazelnuts Ooh. in them I like the, the dark mm. chocolate ones I like the cheese oh. or the orange I'll try the orange oh, all of them I'll eat ones. all of them okay yeah okay here in Malaga I've only seen the white red oh. and black ones you need to move back to Hackney. There's some orange lint balls. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'll get my mum to send me some. No, I love lint. Yeah. <laughs> Mama. Okay, your first concert. Oh, I, I can't remember because my parents used to take me so young. <gasps> the first memory of your first oh, concert. Oh my God. The earliest memory, sorry. Uh, oh my lord, yeah, I have no oh, idea. So many. Maybe, maybe in like Ronnie Scott's. Okay. Seeing some jazz people, who nice. knows? Nice. I remember, yeah, it must have been because, have you ever been to Ronnie yep. Scott's? It's like the famous, super famous jazz club in Soho, mm -hmm. um, and like where all the famous people mm -hmm. used to go. And this was before like smoking ban, Ooh. so it would just be like full clouds of smoke. <laughs> Yeah, so I remember just being a kid, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, it's <laughs> Yeah. Okay, nice. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably the earliest memory. Okay. Uh, your favourite cuisine? Mm -hmm. uh, Thai food. Thai food. Ooh. Oh, oh, Dad's coming in. That's my dad. Hi, Dad. Hi. We have a cameo. I'm doing a podcast right now. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome to join. By the way, she chose, um, now a dog the way, she chose Scotland he over Chile. Oh, he can't okay. hear me. <laughs> yeah, can you take the dog out, please? Hi there. Come on. Come on, little dog. Yeah, because the dog one is coming. She's oh, the dog. Oh, bless. Oh, bless. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Podcast gold. <laughs> oh. There we go. Is, this is, is all new. poodle or mix? She's a cockapoo. Oh, oh. Yeah, she just got uh she just got neutered oh, so bless. they shaved her wrist and so she looks oh, ridiculous bless. now. Oh, bless. What's her name? <laughs> That's why she's in this outfit. Olive, oh yeah, Olive. <laughs> uh, okay, bye. <laughs> Olive was like, what's going on in there? <laughs> yeah. Um Let me You said Thai cuisine, correct? Yes, love Thai uh, food. Coffee or tea? None. Oh, What's your warm drink? I hate them both. What's your warm winter? If if I have to, I'll drink a stock cube. Oh, really? <laughs> you know that stuff, bouillon? Yeah. It's like that, yeah, that instant like nor, stock. Like cubes. Oh, yeah. God. But really, are you joking yeah. or are you serious? 
No, I'm being okay. serious. I love a, a cup of soup, <laughs> like a, what's it called? Yeah, like I don't like tea and I don't like coffee, Hot so chocolate. why am I going to waste my time on them? Yeah, occasionally. But I feel like I'm just drinking a whole glass of sugar. What's that drink called? Is it in Argentina they drink mate? Well, no, tea, you don't like tea. Oh, yeah, that's horrible too. You're in England, you're in England, you need <laughs> well, something more. Everyone's like, what's wrong with I'm like, you? I'm one of them. Everyone's either called... No. Nope. Nope. Well, that's because you're such an nope. original, one of a kind. Oh, yes, I'll, I'll stick with my water, <laughs> thanks. Uh, mm. <laughs> that's the end of the line. The lining of question. Oh. The lining of questioning. The line of the questioning. Lining. The lining. <laughs> thank God. Take thank away God. That these lining. things are not live. I can just chop them up because. <laughs> Thanks for your lining of questioning and lining of answers. Oh, that's okay. Um, I loved lining those answers. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Am I saying your name At least right? It worked this time. time. Okay. Yeah. So I never actually asked. So I just was like, uh, I'm just saying it a different way or a strange way. Okay. It's like, I didn't know if you were a boy or a girl. Yeah. Because I have, like, girlfriends and male friends at Yanka. Yeah. So I was like, it can be both. Do I it can be both. Yeah, she is. <laughs> she, her. Yes. Ola Yinka. I'm of the Ola kind. <laughs> nice. You, you have two Yinka. Oh, is that what I mean? Uh, yes, there's Ada Yinka or Ola Yinka. Oh, Ola Yinka. So that determines whether you're a... Oh. So, yeah. I'm from the... But I just say Yinka because in Spain they go, Ola like, like <laughs> no. no it's Yinka but yeah it was a pleasure and again <laughs> uh, that's it I'll let you be Yay. I'll let you go with all back to my uh, procrastination no leave the playstation <laughs> the playstation I would eat my boyfriend's oh, house I don't have one yes four yeah. oh. we like playing this cooking game <laughs> Straight face. It's called Overcooked. Face. I was not expecting yeah. that. I was like, <laughs> we play GTA or Crash Bandicoot. What do we no. play these days? Oh, yeah, we play Crash Bandicoot, yeah. but we also play this game called Overcooked, where you have to, you're like in a restaurant uh-huh. and you have to like serve orders. So it's really fun. It like gets quite competitive, but you have to work as a team. So me and my boyfriend are like, I need some more onions. Chop me some onions. Oh, it sounds some like intense. Yeah, it is intense, but it's really fun. Okay, a cooking game. Yeah, it's not for everyone. I was going to say, yeah. it's very particular. That's a very niche. That's like your boyfriend said, I want to play PlayStation with you, and you said it has to be something for us both. And he was like, a cooking game. <laughs> Only if I'm allowed to cook. <laughs> oh, last question. Do you cook? <laughs> like to cook? Oh, I love cooking. What's your specialty? Mm-hmm. I make some really good tacos. It's mm. very important what you say next. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. What's the what are the ingredients in your tacos? Okay, so I I press all the tacos myself because I've got the, the corn okay, flour nice, and the nice, press, nice. and then I'll do. I quite like doing some fried bean mm-hmm. ones, and then you put like cheese, and you put the salsa and the salady bits, mm-hmm. and that's really nice. And you fry. Uh, if you fry off some sweet corn as well and then it gets all nice and brown that's really nice or i can do um what's it called uh like fried fish okay so you chop them up into little bits you batter them and then you fry them and put them in there any guacamole what you can do is slow roast i'm not good with avocados they make me feel sick i know and i'm from chile <laughs> kind of weird <laughs> that, that... <laughs> i've never heard of anyone having a bad reaction to avocados <laughs> yeah they make me feel really bad oh. and i was like oh that's a shame. Yeah, I don't know what. That's a nice, precious. Yeah. yeah, when I went to Chile, literally everything is slathered in avocado. Mm. Like, you go to McDonald's, they've got avocado oh, and everything. That's, that sounds like heaven to me. With my breakfast, <laughs> with my tea, with my coffee, with, with everything. Okay. Oh, maybe you've got an intolerance. Yeah, just not good with it. Maybe. Dodgy. I don't know. It just doesn't bode mm, well with me. That's Scottish side, I think. Ah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, what's this foreign thing? <laughs> Okay, Louise, I'll let you go. Okay, nice to see you again. Nice to see you again, for the first time again. See you next week. (laughs) Bye. 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 Thanks.